Oh my god. There were some really bad games this year and some really disappointing ones. In fact, a lot of disappointing ones you'll probably expect to be on this list, but oh no, because these are the top 10 worst games of 2014. Number 10. Warhammer 40,000 Storm of Vengeance. Okay, our first game on this list is a example of extremely poor use of license. Warhammer 40k is such a rich universe, it's constantly in war, it's ripe for deep strategy, RTS, role playing, first person shooters, hell fucking anything but a goddamn fucking lane defense game. Games Workshop for some reason decided to say fuck quality and whore its license out to anyone and everyone in 2014. And Storm of Vengeance is the fruit of that labor. Slow, boring, and completely devoid of strategy, watching the same kill animations on the same background over and over is maddening, lazy, so fucking lazy! It's a complete reskin of their previous game, Ninja Cats vs Samurai Dogs! This game actually later released on PC! But it was a beta tag there, but there was no actual mention of beta in the Steam description. After people called them out, the devs said there wasn't any time to go into early access. But after that backlash, they had to go back to the early access banner. That's fucking shady! And guess what? It was made by the developers of last year's abomination, Ride to Hell Retribution! Stop! Hey, my name is Barry Hoffman. I'm a CCO of Utechnics. We're working on the DLC right now, but safe to say there's going to be a lot of DLC available on launch already. Because we just want to promote real-time multiplayer at its best in the end. You stop it! Stop making games and fucking them up! Number 9 These are your fucking starting enemies. You see how his name is Red? His name is fucking Red. If I didn't have this guy helping me, this would be so frustrating. DON'T START YOUR GAMES LIKE THIS! THIS HAPPENED IN RISEN 2! YOU DIDN'T LEARN YOUR FUCKING LESSON! NOBODY WILL WANNA PLAY YOUR SHITTY FUCKING GAME we FOR ANOTHER 50 oh. HOURS! Risen 3. By now, the relatively small team of developers of Risen 3, they, they want to kill me, okay? I've included the previous Risen games and, and my top 10 worst games of the year list before. This year, I didn't even have the fucking stamina to finish this third torture session to the end. Your combat sucks! Your swordplay sucks! And you've learned NOTHING! from Risen 2 Dark Waters. Don't even try to pass this off as a true sequel when you make zero improvements to combat. If the developers want to be this fucking lazy and reuse all the assets from Risen 2 and slap a number three on it on the fucking box, then I can't be bothered to force myself through it as I did for the first two games. Oh no, I'm not doing that shit again. This is a sorry excuse for a pirate RPG. There are fans of this series and I can't understand why. The combat is fucking awful on purpose. Not until several hours into the game when you learn how to fucking kick and block from trainers as if these concepts are lost on any human being who was a soldier in the first place until you pay some fucking gold to learn them is incomprehensible. 
This game is purposefully shitty and boring as you level up through it like the first 10, 15 hours. And then instead of being rewarded with really cool shit as you go along after that long time, it's only barely average when it's running on all cylinders. Leviathan? I don't think I'm going to win again. Oh, oh no. Oh no, I'm stuck. I'm stuck, but so is he. Let's see if we could shoot it. No more ammunition. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit. If this is how they want to treat their own sequels by doing the bare minimum effort required to continue this series, you know, then I'm gonna keep giving it a hard time because it deserves it for not fucking bothering to even evolve. If Risen 4 is another fucking pirate game in the same fucking region with the same fucking buildings and people in it with the same fucking faces, I'm gonna scream! You just press A once! If you wanna do that, then put a separation between heavy attacks and light attacks! Fuck this combat system! Oh, you're gonna miss! You're gonna miss right the fuck in front of his face! Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Without the ability to do light and heavy. Number eight. Yet another movie license game. So pump up the money, fighting. And that's Spider-Man 2, folks, coming out to a store near you. You need it. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Movie licensed games suck. They suck balls. Everyone knows that by now. However, when a developer like Beanox, who has actually been working on the same goddamn franchise in question, Spider-Man, for more than fucking years, decades, longer than I can remember, when they completely decide to throw out all their advancements, their improvements, what they've learned over the years, to for some reason take several steps backwards in this latest Spider-Man attempt, that's when you know that all parties involved are simply cashing the hell in. Amazing Spider-Man 2 is fucking lazy as hell. It's hardly anything other than the old mechanics. It, it just, and not even anything new. There's not a fucking unique bone in its body. It has hilarious glitches. Thankfully, licensed games, especially in 2014, have been surprisingly bouncing back and innovating to stay relevant because of our pushbacks. They've actually gone on to become commercial successes like Alien Isolation, South Park, Middle Earth, but no, <laughs> Spider-Man 2 is a perfect example that some companies still don't get it. Okay, they would rather fart out something in, in half the time to cash in than properly develop the game and put effort like those others have. Wake up, Activision. The copy-paste license games, they're dead. Get with the program. You might actually make something worthwhile, you know, in addition to making a buttload of cash. How about that? What are you doing there, lady? Huh? Time's running out. You going someplace? Huh? You gonna go home? Huh? Is that where you're going? Huh? You got six seconds to get to your house. You better hurry. Okay. Maybe you wanna take a taxi? 
Instead? Okay. Number seven. I, I, heard I don't understand that. what this has to do with Dead Island. Over if this there. is a part of the Dead Island franchise, why did they go so far out of their way to make it nothing like the Dead Island franchise? Why did they just rename it something else? I can't jump and I can't swim, so I'm blocked from standing up now. By what? I'm not sure. Okay. Now I appear to be stuck. I probably should not have done this. <laughs> Stand up! I, I am, Joe. Look at me. Escape Dead Island. Is it, this game is the fourth in the franchise, and it completely removes the RPG elements, the open world, the crafting, uh, the fun of previous games, and instead supplements that with cell shading, poorly done, uh, dull combat, ugly interiors, unlikable main protagonists, and just ridiculous glitches. This gets filed under the category, why the hell does this exist? <laughs> but if you're hearing this, know that you're not alone. Hello? Who is this? I just wish I had understood. I should have kept friends close. So much left unsaid. Can you hear me? I've learned so much in these last <laughs> few months. Can about you hear myself, me? Well, about the world. Have chips left? Yes. And it's people. Take them. It's yours. <laughs> what difference do the answers make? It's, it's not for Dead Island fans as it does nothing to explore that lore or previous gameplay elements of those games. It, it's not for other zombie game fans because it's so painfully average in every way. Just about the only thing the game does that's occasionally interesting is fuck with your head. The, and it has the main character like questioning reality and weird shit happening. Yeah. What are you I... supposed to do then? Run away from him. Oh, Whoa, what the? Where'd that come, that come from? from nowhere! Holy fuck. What? 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 He's dead. It's game over. <laughs> but ironically, the game already achieves the mind fucked by simply you playing it and forcing yourself through it. Because after those mind fuck sections, the game has you go back to the beginning so that you have to go through and play and backtrack through all the places that you've already been before against your will. <laughs> Rezzy's okay. like, oh no, I'll not that girl. She was my fan. <laughs> <laughs> Stealth sections don't work very well. The save points, they're awful. The weapons are shit, and they're not even consistent in damage at all. Even its $40 price point is asking far too much for this pointless, misguided adventure with zero replayability. Zero! I be lost without I'm you. gonna make sure I never have to worry about that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're stuck. Oh, you did. All right, that's it, chat. We died at the Geo Farm complex while trying to investigate the crashed airplane, which none of us give a shit about, really. <laughs> Number six. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Watch this. I'm gonna shoot the gun out of his hand. <laughs> Let's see if he goes back to hiding. Yeah! <laughs> he doesn't want a headshot. No headshot! <laughs> uh, you're the only way you kill him is headshot. Come on, buddy! Oh shit! Got him! Speaking of completely unnecessary additions to a franchise, we have this little gem, Deus Ex The Fall, a sequel to the fantastic human revolution. Only instead of playing the badass Adam, you play as Ben Saxon, an augmented ex-SAS who is painfully cliche and devoid of any character you'll want to gouge out your eyes just listening to him talk about shit.
I hate to see great potential waste. Tell me what you did. I want the truth. I wish oh I could my make god, it shut the hell up! Recruitment into the tyrant. Is the story not, not getting you? No. no. Anyone is given. Because they're all We're talking right like this, long. and I'm it is really important that you listen to us. This part of the game is interesting to for you to <laughs> listen <laughs> to. <laughs> you had it substituted for. This game is an absolute train wreck, a pure shit show. The writing is non existent. Everyone reads their lines like they're fucking zombies. Gameplay is a sad joke. Guns do crap for damage. The cover system feels all wrong. The AI are either psychic mediums knowing your exact position or they're hilariously, shockingly incompetent. Oh, that was horrible. <laughs> Shooter! He looks so funny. What the fuck? I just want to shoot his fingers. Who hides like this? What is that? Oh, shit. oh fuck! What the fuck? Oh fuck! Who in the right mind hides behind cover with their head sticking out? <laughs> Get behind yeah, but did you see? Did you see his his hand? You can approach the level sometimes in multiple ways, but why? You won't give a shit enough to force yourself through its two to three hour flogging of the Deus Ex franchise. Way to go, Square Enix. Way to go. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? This game is off. Don't do it, Joe. Don't. <laughs> he's stuck. Oh, he's gonna fuck you up. Joe, get him. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Joe, you suck. Shoot his head, shoot his neck. What the fuck? How did he do that? Number five. Look at how long it mine! I take the fucking mine! Alright, this was only four hours here, but 24 hours? 24 hours to mine something? Oh, I, and I'm like, okay, I'll fucking, I'll fucking I'll bypass that, because that's ridiculous. It, it takes 247 gems! That's, that's like $2.50! Where the gems? Holy shit! Hey, what the fuck? And then the original Dungeon Keeper took like 60 seconds to mine a fucking block full of gold and shit! And I it takes a day! It's, it's, it's a 3x3, three three. I need 9 tiles! It takes 9 days to build a fucking hatchery! Or 15 fucking dollars! That doesn't seem unreasonable to you! You know, I grew up, I grew up playing Pac-Man in the fucking arcade! You know, quarter after quarter after quarter, but, but this is fucking exploitive! Are you fucking kidding me? This is fucking bullshit! I feel you. I feel you, Francis. Screw EA and their dirty, cash whoring, wallet raping brains! They don't give a shit about Dungeon Keeper. They don't give a shit that people have been waiting nearly a fucking decade to play another one. They only saw an opportunity to slap a well-known name onto one of their cow clicker money extraction and machines and went full ahead. This game got so much shit when it came out and it deserved it. In fact, EA even had to come out and sort of apologize in the most dickish way, <laughs> unable to admit blatant wrongdoing in a con job by saying they had made a mistake by innovating too much with Dungeon Keeper. Innovating? Innovating? How is fucking our wallets and our nostalgia innovative, you stupid motherfucker? Number four. Kill. Revenge kill. Continuing along the free to play license destruction trend, here we have Fear Online. 
where they take a well-known and liked horror first-person shooter franchise, Fear, chuck it off to a developer in Korea that had no idea what made Fear interesting, unique, or good, in order for them to crank out an online multiplayer PvP shooter with free-to-play mechanics to squeeze the money out of the wallets of its fans and anyone stupid enough to spend cash in it. Fear Online, called Fear Origin Online by its developers, the Korean studio InPlay Interactive, Innovation in Game, is an arena shooter with well-tension-filled story of oriental occult and horror, which restructures the fun of fear and take of the body of AI to chase and be chased. You can probably see what's going on here. This is another case of a company licensing and using the name Fear without being remotely involved with the creation of the first games. Not that that's going to stop them from trying to piggyback off that game's accolades. Aside from the tutorial, this game has nothing to do with Fear. Nothing! So how do they, you know, honor the horror franchise's roots? You know, justify using the name? Simple. Flash a JPEG of a scary face every once in a while on your screen in the middle of a multiplayer firefight for a cheap jump scare! Tension? Horror? Uneasiness? Why bother with that when you can play a loud noise, flash the screen red, and show a picture of Alma for a split second? You know those Flash games that think horror is flashing a picture on screen randomly with an accompanied scream sound effect or an instrumental sting? You'd think they had a hand in creating this. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ooh, fear online! It's so thematic! Whoa, it's scary! <laughs> Chaos D1 put himself through this for your viewing pleasure. Granted, this mechanic isn't used all the time, only when you're on the scary version of the stage, where the layout is exactly the same, except now it's dark and everything is covered in blood because boo. If unintentional incompetence isn't what you're looking for, there's plenty of actual incompetence in the graphics for you to choose from. The animations of characters are both purposefully and unintentionally choppy, looking worse than the mutant enemies that crawl towards you in this jagged manner like their limbs are animated with less of a frame rate than the game is running. There's graphical errors galore, like loading into a room only to find that the walls have not fully loaded, while the players and random decorations have, leaving you to blindly stumble around a black void, hoping that the enemy player you see isn't, in reality, blocked by a wall or object. This game is a hacker haven with no punishments for those types of players. This is pretty trippy, is this a... Uh, whoa, look at that. Look at those knife kills. Wow. I didn't know you could pay for this. This is pretty neat. Yeah, I should be on the top of the leaderboard sometime soon. The graphics are the equivalent of the Xbox One! And I mean the Xbox original! There is constant crashing, patching, glitching, goddamn patch screen, fuck it! It's broken, and they charge upwards of five dollars for each gun. There is absolutely no reason to play this game. You have to pay to play the levels that somewhat are like the original, but not really? Fuck that! It is really difficult to fuck up a free-to-play game. But they managed to fuck up this free-to-play game. Stay far away from Fear Online. It's not worth it. There are a thousand other games like this that use this format that you can play instead. My little brothers are addicted to combat arms. Go fucking play that game. Stay away from fear online. These people don't deserve your money. You know, I, this, this, this looks pretty innovative. I've never really seen this done before. The only problem I'm having right now is just, you know, I'm not killing people fast enough. So, you know, I wonder if I can, like, what if there's any DLC in this game that'll help me kill faster. Number three.
Oh my god! Oh my god, no! No! Just fucking no! No, how do games like this still exist in 2014? It's not that it's a rail shooter, it's that a sh it's a shit ass rail shooter, possibly putting the final nail in the coffin of that genre. It's technically flawed, extremely buggy, frustratingly difficult, with AI that has laser pinpoint accuracy in these spikes, lazy QTE moments. Graphics that are so laughably poor that Sly looks like he has Sasha's links for arms. <laughs> The hard way is fine with me. $40 for a four hour awful rail shooter? No! It's no! 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 With characters that repeat the same lines over and over. He's a man, not a god! 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 Come on, comrade! He's a man, not a god! Come on, comrade! He's a man, not a god! He's a man, not a god! He's a man, not a god! What a fucking ripoff! Plain and simple. An insult to its license. An insult to gaming. An insult to your wallets. It's it's an insult. It's a fucking insult. John! Forty dollars for a four hour awful rail shooter? No! A fucking ripoff, plain and simple. An insult to its license, an insult to gaming, and an insult to our wallets. Fuck you, Rambo. The game just fucking crashed. That's another thing I have to deal with. The game will randomly crash! Shit! The fucking game crashed again! Number two. I really can't do justice on how bad this next game is. Uh, you, you just have to see it for yourself and hear from Jim who put himself through it. Another day, another terrible game on Steam. The Slaughtering Grounds has it all. Its levels consist of large open maps littered with unaltered objects, enemies and architecture purchased from a storefront rather than created by the developers, all thrown randomly together with no regard for artistic or mechanical consistency. It has 30 seconds of music that loop incessantly. It controls like shit. You have to be holding the weapon you want ammo for when you pick up ammo because the dev couldn't code different ammo types. And rather than beat a level, you have to sit in a map and wait for 15 minutes to pass until a new level loads because the dev couldn't code exits or map an actual, you know, level. Also, the game crashes after three levels. <laughs> it's digital torture. It's digital waterboarding, okay? It's disgusting. But it gets better. Not only is this game fucking awful, but so are its developers, apparently. 
after Jim posted a video to YouTube warning other people not to buy the game in his opinion, the developer decided to personally attack Jim Sterling in what may be the greatest developer meltdown of 2014. The morning after I published my video on the slaughtering grounds, I was alerted by several viewers that developer Imminent Uprising had responded in what it claimed to be the first of a new series of videos, Review the Reviewers. Not only that, the dev had changed its name to Jim F. and Sterling's son on the Steam community forums, where it confirmed it was behind the video. The video, for its part, was a full re-uploading of my own recording, albeit with bitter text overlays sarcastically speaking as me, noting multiple times that I was a fucking idiot, and that my alleged review of Slaughtering Grounds was awful. The video blamed me for not muting the game's horrible music like I was apparently supposed to, and for not holding an empty gun when picking up ammo, and for not giving a fully detailed review in what was supposed to be a quick look first impressions video. It also blamed me for not working out the game's bugs on behalf of the developer, and kept quoting me as saying, I'm Jim fucking Sterling's son, which quickly became my new favourite phrase. Not done with that, they decided to then take a DMCA notice takedown to Jim's channel on YouTube. Not content to show its ass with its weird little breakdown, the developer finally decided to go for the classic last resort, that final tool in the box for the cowardly developer who gets desperate enough to silence a critic. A full week after the publication of my original video, I received a notice that the Slaughtering Grounds' publisher, Digital Homicide LLC, had filed a copyright strike against it, effectively removing it from YouTube and fucking with my channel in a number of ways. This kind of behaviour is often a knee-jerk response to criticism, it's what Funcom and Wild Games did to Total Biscuit. In this case, though, it wasn't really knee-jerk since it was their last gambit, which makes it even more ridiculous since we all know how these things go. As the dev claimed that it allowed other Slaughtering Grounds videos to remain online and took mine down because I somehow uniquely violated their copyright. So convinced of this unique violation was imminent uprising, it promised to see me in court and seemed to expect a full apology from yours truly before the eyes of the legal system. Later, the dev would make a blog post, now removed, but not before legal blog Pope Hat found it, where the dev revealed just how little it understood of copyright law. See, imminent uprising's entire case against me hinged on the fact that I said the game was an absolute failure in the description of my video. According to imminent uprising, you cannot use a word like absolute if you haven't played the game for an arbitrary length of time, and this violates copyright... somehow. Yeah, fuck those guys and their shit-ass game! As users gave the game a ton of negative feedback on Steam, and went on to uncover a number of appropriated art assets. The game's blood effects, for example, were taken from Google Image Search. You can even see where they fail to wipe the white background from the blood in the game. Slaughtering Grounds' official artwork is a desktop wallpaper made by someone else and not credited, and it was of course discovered that Imminent Uprising was censoring negative feedback, as well as banning anybody who had anything bad to say about the game or its creator. Even more amazing, the dev held a contest to try and cash in on its poor publicity, offering a free game key to anybody who made a post actually bashing the game. And then it banned anyone who entered the contest. Yes, yes, the dev made its own contest to try and trick people into eating a ban. Bearing in mind that nobody would have paid attention to the dev's shady behaviour had they not flipped out, Imminent Uprising flipped out even harder. Number one. Curiosity killed the cat. Game curiosity killed the angry Joe. In order to succeed here, you have to be a well-rounded Robertson. You need to learn duck calling 101. Here's what a good call sounds like. Here comes some, John Luke. Boy, he's pulling me in. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell do people see in, in Duck, Duck Dynasty that makes it so popular? I, well, I, I thought I'd find out by buying this game. According to the marketing material, I can bond with the Robertsons. I am the Duck Call Builder Extraordinaire. Oh, good grief. Here we go again. I'm just saying. You ever wonder what perfection sounds like? It sounds a lot like this. Don't. 
It's like poetry for the ears, isn't it? Oh, isn't on. it? Hey, I'm just trying to teach our new <laughs> intern, John Luke over there, a thing or two about duck Is calling. Nice? Gentlemen. No. Hello, Willie. Party pooper alert. Whoop, whoop. I can be one with nature. Fucking hell. Fuck your beaver. <laughs> God damn it. Hey. Yeah, he got away. No. <laughs> Luke, on your left. Joe, leave them alone. Joe, god damn it. Get away. No. God damn it. I'm the Beaver King. Stop it. Wait, you're a Beaver <laughs> massacre murderer. You fucking serial killer. Stop it. And again, bond with family. Blow it. There's no sport in that. You're not a fucking hunter. Good morning, <laughs> Vietnam. Now that's the way to take a beaver down, my boy. <laughs> I don't understand how rednecks keep buying these fucking games and not expect more. I could say redneck because I'm from Texas, okay? Yeah, boy. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Shoot them ducks! Yeah! Fuck that duck in the eye! Yeah! Woo! Wait, wait, what? No, 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 no. Oh, well, well, okay. The countless Cabela's hunting simulators to the sea of fishing boar fest. This demographic eats it up, just buying whatever is marketed to them without a peep for quality or innovation. Do I have to do it for you? This is pure distilled boring. It is torture. It supposedly simulates what happens in this godforsaken show. Its intentions are fully realized here because I've seen it. You play as John Luke learning the ropes in this mind-numbingly stupid video game with the zero redeeming value. You have QTE duck calling. The key to a good call is hitting the right note at the right time. Here, I'll show you. Now you give it a try, John Luke. Make a call, Joe. That's good. See if you can do a couple more feed calls. Try yeah. not to miss any notes. Yee. Driving your F-150 from point A to point B. This is terrible. Is this all that, what the fuck? This car controls like garbage. Duck calling QTE. All right, why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the idiot's house. I don't get it. Knock, knock. Who's there? The chicken. You're saying that the chicken crossed the road to get to my house? Then somehow was able to knock on the door with its chicken feet? And that makes me an idiot? Driving your boat from point A to point B. Are you playing? All I can do is look around. Oh. That's cool. And shooting the birds the hell out of the sky. Bro. You double killed that one? <laughs> double he did. Kill. Look at all these dead fucking ducks. And that's it for $40. The price of multiple DVD seasons of this crap if you were so inclined to buy them. The graphics are bad. The game is pointless. <laughs> did you... Did you press a button? Yeah, I found it. Jar of Vietnamese dongs. The cutscenes are overly long to do this 
funny jokes with the Robertsons, but none of them read their lines with a with any sense of realism and like they give a shit other than cashing in on their paycheck. Willie, we, we literally just started. It won't be ready for a while. We still need all sorts of things to make a big dinner spread. Hey, you just say the word, and I'll go out there, and the next thing you know, boom, bow, 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 you got a spread of the finest order here. I'm so happy. This is going to be good. By the end of it, your standards will have gone from a reasonable gamer person to redneck in two seconds flat. That their Duck Dynasty video game. Video games. We like to play video games. Why? Because after being put through its crap missions at the beginning, you'll be yeah like an idiot when it serves up something occasionally different like, you know, swamp races, which are broken. Watch. Turn. I'm not gonna turn. I like gonna to turn. I'm not gonna oh, turn it unless I absolutely need to. Too oh much my, drifting! What the fuck you is going the on? What's the nothing. fuck? Oh! I can't go backwards and now I'm gonna fuck! In this game, you can supposedly prank a Robertson. Go, 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 go. I'm the move. master of distraction. I'll distract him. Buzz me on my phone when you're ready to oh, move. Oh shit, you broke oh, the game. I broke the game! But it's the Robertsons who have pranked all their fans, and now gamers, with their shitty, shitty ass game. If you have an enemy, buy him this game. Sit him in a chair. Tie him the fuck up and force him to play it. It might scramble his brain so much that in the end he could turn into your best friend for life simply for you turning it off for him. Huh? Angry Joe. Let no one say he didn't try to bring people together. Fuck Duck Dynasty the video game! Oh no, I went the wrong way! I don't want to turn around. <laughs> what the fuck is this? You have to load? No! Fuck! No! No, I'm not playing this part again! You load, you son of a bitch! You fucking load! No! God damn it! Okay. That was it for the top 10 worst games of 2014. In my opinion, I would love to see some of the games that I left off the list or that you've played or that you think I've forgotten. Make your own list in the comments. And now remember, there's probably some games that you're wondering, Joe, why'd you leave this off the list? That's because it's probably in my top 10 most disappointing games of 2014. So we got that list coming up. And of course, the top 10 controversies of 2014. Okay, guys, we'll see you on the next Angry Joe Show.